The following program is sponsored by CBN. Coming up, a revival inside an unlikely place. He said, you're going all holy on me, ain't so? How one oil man is reaching our nation's prisoners. He got caught and I didn't. The only difference is he's in prison and I'm not. Plus, she was very pigeon toed A prayer of faith leads to a miracle. Her feet are not turned in anymore. And from contestant to talent coach on The Voice, Anthony Evans sings live on today's 700 Club. Well, welcome to the 700 Club, folks. Uh, in the news, I'm sure you've seen the headlines. Uh, the president has had a couple of A's. Uh, years ago, there was a firm called Black, Manafort, and Stone. They were the uh, Republican uh, gurus in terms of election politics, and they were very good at it. And Paul Manafort has gone on to uh, become a fixer, and apparently, he has gained a lot of money and wasn't paying taxes on it. So um, he has been convicted in a jury in Virginia. And uh, Trump's other fixer named Cohen uh, apparently paid some money. Now, paying money to somebody and violating an election law isn't a big deal because it's got to be settled by the Federal Election Commission. But we'll be talking about that and whether he's implicating the president and whether uh, this means it's going to be anything. Did he indeed, did the president tell Cohen to pay off these women? And if he did, what violation did he p commit? We'll be talking about that on today's program. All right. And Pat, it's still not clear what this all means for the president legally. The political fallout, though, could be costly. Charlene Aaron has the story. Former Trump attorney Michael Cohen pleaded guilty to eight counts of violating campaign finance rules by paying hush money to two women who claimed affairs with Trump. Mr. Cohen pleaded guilty to two campaign finance charges, both for the purpose of influencing the 2016 election. Eleven days before the election, Cohen paid off porn star Stormy Daniels, who claimed she had a one-night stand with Trump. The president initially said he knew nothing about it. Cohen said in federal court Tuesday that he made the payments in coordination and at the direction of a candidate for federal office. It's, it's not disgrace. clear if right Trump here, broke the law, and legal experts say it would be hard to prove in court. But Cohen's lawyer, Lanny Davis, told MSNBC... It was a crime for President Trump to direct Michael Cohen to the crime of a campaign finance donation that exceeded the legal limitations. But Political points out the documents outlining Cohen's plea deal don't appear to provide any examples or evidence that Trump directed Cohen to do anything. And the president's lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, said there was no allegation of any wrongdoing against the president. But legal experts say there could be problems for the president if he is heard on tape directing Cohen to pay the women with campaign funds. Cohen's guilty plea could add to Democratic calls to impeach the president. Legal analysts say a sitting president cannot be indicted, but he can be impeached, which is a political, not a criminal response. Violation of election laws yeah. are regarded as kind of jaywalking in the realm of things about elections, uh, and there are so many of them. Every administration violates the election laws. Every candidate violates the election right. laws when they run for president. Right. Meanwhile, Cohen's guilty plea came at almost the same time that former Trump campaign chairman Paul Manafort was convicted of eight financial crimes in a trial arising from special counsel Robert Mueller's investigation, even though it has nothing to do with Russia collusion. But for now, the focus is clearly on Cohen's case and the implications it may or may not have for President Trump. Charlene Aaron, CBN News. You know, the uh, federal election law is kind of opaque, but uh, it was deliberately set up to be a stalemate. There are three Democrats and there are three Republicans. And so uh, you've got to win one of the Republicans or one of the Democrats to do anything. And uh, the, the penalties are pretty uh, innocuous. So 
exceeding the campaign finance com uh, laws is not that big a deal because in order to get any kind of an action, the Federal Election Commission has got to act. And so they cannot act because the Congress deliberately set it up that way. But that's the way it goes in Washington. David Brody is our CBN News political analyst. And David, this is a mess. It didn't help in the president any. Is there any thought that he might try to uh, pardon uh, Paul Manafort? Well, there's talk about that here in Washington, Pat, but uh, at this point, a lot of folks, at least in this parlor game that we know of Washington, D.C., they're saying pretty much no, that wouldn't probably make much sense, at least at this point. But, you know, things change in Trump world, as, we, as we've known. Look, this is a, a bit of a mess, uh, for sure, for the president. But in terms of the legal jeopardy question here, and that's what everybody is wondering about, uh, you know, was it a crime? And really, uh, there's some mixed views on that. I would say this, that from a legal perspective, what we're understanding is that what is the intent? In other words, would President Trump, and here's the legal question a lot of folks are wondering, and this is the question that would need to be answered, would President Trump have done this anyhow if there wasn't a campaign? Well, uh, there's been a history of uh, paying off a few people along the way, and so therefore, if it's personal, if it was to protect the marriage, Melania, things that were going on there, that's different than campaign finance reform and actually having a targeted reason to do so. So that's going to be uh, the other potential shoe that, could uh, shoe that could drop. We'll have to wait and see. It feels like a drip, drip, drip scenario here, Pat. You know, it all started with a so-called investigation of Russian peddling in our uh, uh, meddling in our election. And Mueller has got, that's his mandate. He doesn't have a mandate to investigate personal financial uh, wrongdoing or violation of IRS uh, uh, statutes. So what are you hearing up there about uh, his uh, overreach? And that's what it amounts to. Well, that's right. That word overreach that you just said there, Pat, is the key word. Uh, that has been repeated at the White House. Uh, folks that are close to President Trump talking to sources that are close to the president this morning saying the same thing, that this is not only overreach, but they sp talk about Michael Cohen specifically and how Michael Cohen has a credibility problem, they say. You know, we've heard Rudy Giuliani say this, but let's remember Michael Cohen had said at one point early on that Donald Trump knew nothing about any sort of payment, and now Apparently, he knows he knew all about the payment and was directing it uh, to go to, uh, you know, from a campaign finance reform perspective, go into the campaign. So, look, uh, they're going to point to his credibility, and that's going to be uh, obviously a linchpin of all of this. As for Russian collusion, Pat, nothing on Manafort, nothing on Michael Cohen. Uh, the one concern clearly at the White House is what else does Michael Cohen potentially know? And I know they talk about a credibility problem with Cohen. But we hear now that Michael Cohen might have some information about this DNC hacking situation that took place. And did Trump know about it before it actually happened? Lanny Davis, Michael Cohen's attorney, suggesting that that could be the case. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, how about this impeachment stuff? You know, it would mm. almost be impossible to impeach a president, but the House would, may try it if they, it switches. What do you hear about that? There's no doubt about it. Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats won't talk about impeachment uh, before the midterm elections, but they'll talk a lot about it after, for sure, if they win control of the House of Representatives. And that's, I don't want to say that's the plan, but that's kind of the blueprint, if you will, to go after this president. Look, they were going to go after him anyhow, but now with Michael Cohen's plea deal, that's the linchpin. That's the, that's the uh, center of, its, of all of this. If You've got Michael Cohen saying that the president directly uh, told Michael Cohen to make this payment, uh, in essence, breaking campaign finance laws. You can imagine what the Democrats are going to do with that. And remember, Pat, if the Democrats take control, and you know this, but if the Democrats take control, what happens? They have subpoena power. They're the ones in control, not Republicans. And that's not good news for President Trump. Well, last thing, of course, the Republicans tried to impeach uh, President Clinton, Bill Clinton. And mm -hmm. they, they got an impeachment uh, motion through the, the House, but it failed in the Senate. So I think, uh, what are people saying? I mean, it really didn't go anywhere, and, and Clinton stayed in office. 
Well, they don't have 67 votes anywhere near it in the Senate is what they'll need. They would need two-thirds in the Senate, as you know, Pat, uh, and, and they're, it's just not there. So once again, just to, back to 101, you can impeach a president in the House like what happened to Bill Clinton, but you have to convict him in the Senate, and you'd have to have two-thirds, 67 votes. They don't have that. Now, having said that, uh, the worst-case scenario is uh, what happened to, obviously, uh, Richard Nixon at the time, where he basically lost the Republican Party, and they ditched him, and at that point, uh, he was in all sorts of problems, and he had to resign. Now, the question then becomes, how many Republicans will ditch President Trump if this thing gets worse? And that we just don't know right now. David, thank you so much for that insight. Well, in other news, folks, on the heels of yet another cyber attack from Russia this week, a Senate committee took up the issue of protecting our critical infrastructure from cyber hackers. As CBN's national security correspondent Eric Rosales shows us, the senators fear America is not ready to defend itself against such a targeted attack. The threats to our critical infrastructure, like power and water treatment plants, are real, and senators say the public has no clue how bad it is. America is under cyber attack. We're beginning to act, but not quick enough and not forcefully enough. Now, occasionally the hackers are foreign government individuals, but sometimes those governments are also hiring a freelance hack hackers to also do their bidding. Senators from both sides say more communication must take place, not just to inform the public, but between privately owned companies and the government. With nearly 90% of all U.S. critical infrastructure privately owned, Senator Lindsey Graham offered up the idea of rewarding companies that work together with Homeland Security and other federal agencies on cyber security. You're How about immunity on. from lawsuits? If you'll yeah, do right. what's best in your industry, we will protect you from being sued. Yes, sir, I think that's a How great How about idea. some carrots on the table? Because I don't think DHS can regulate this. Democratic Senator from Rhode Island, Sheldon Whitehouse, brought up a controversial idea, hacking back, which allows the victim of a cyber attack to go on the offensive and hack the adversary. And I think Senator Graham's focus on sanctions against the oligarchs is exactly the right way to solve this. If you want to deter Vladimir Putin, whack him right in the oligarchs. Security experts say we need to get ideas from our allies. Uh, Israel is attacked by Iran and Hezbollah every week in efforts to use cyber tools to disrupt their critical infrastructure. So far they've been able to beat them off, but if I was worried about a, a non-state actor, I would worry about Hezbollah first. Security experts have warned that retaliation in cyberspace present a serious risk and escalate quickly, especially with hackers backed by foreign governments. Eric Rosales, CBN News, Washington. You know, we've been on this program saying over and over again how critical this is. If a cyber uh, attack can do it, or if an EMP blast, wherever it comes from, whether it's from an a airborne nuclear explosion, whether it's from the sun, wherever it comes from, our infrastructure is at risk. And I'm telling you, if the lights go out, folks, in this country, millions will die. We're not talking about something as, uh, you know, a, a minor threat. This is a major threat. And these uh, power uh, grids are tied together. And many times, if one goes out, it can take it down a whole chain of them. So uh, this is something that uh, Congress needs to get its act together right now. And they need to spend some serious money. There needs to be like a czar who knows what he's doing about energy and gets in there and fixes this thing immediately. And then we talk about cyber later on. But right now, just harden the infrastructure so that uh, they're not as vulnerable to the whatever uh, type of uh, explosion, EMP blast, cyber attack, et cetera, whatever happens so that we will not be out without electricity, because if we are, it's going to be devastating. And we're not talking about a whole lot of money. I mean, when you look at a multi-trillion dollar economy, uh, a few hundred billion dollars, it, it sounds, in the old days, it sounded like an awful lot of money. Now it's not. But a few billion would fix it, and we've got to do something. And I might add also that I, I'm thrilled that Regent University, for example, is offering now a marvelous course uh, in cybersecurity, and companies like Maersk, which uh, is bringing their employees, their top men from all around the world are coming here to Tidewater, to Regent University, to get trained in, in cyber 
uh, security. Right. We have a situation where uh, it's, it's like a, a, you know, a plane where, where you can get, get uh, training in, in, you know, in a type of uh, aircraft. A simulator. A simulator. Well, we can simulate a cyber attack. We can simulate how to how to respond to it and what to do, and so people are coming to that. And I might add, if you're interested, uh, see, uh, Region is giving a degree in in cybersecurity, and they're giving certificates in cybersecurity. The number is available. It's uh, there on your screen: eight six six nine one zero seven six one five, and. Uh, Many people, I know the Navy intelligence is using it, has already had one class go through. They've booked 12 more mm -hmm. sessions for their top officials wow. to learn how to do that. And we have, uh, a, well, it's, it's a cyber range of, uh, that's just superb. It's the, it's the state of the art. It's right here at Regent University. I just hope we don't have to have a disaster before lawmakers will do something. Sometimes, you know, they'll be proactive. Like you're sounding the alarm right now. Well, but... they, they won't. They just won't. Yeah. For some reason, this isn't, hasn't risen to the top of the pile. And there isn't a uh, constituency in America for this particular thing. Yeah. And I don't think the uh, power uh, company officials are uh, alarmed enough about what could happen. I'm sure they're sitting back and say, well, everything's cool. Well, it's not cool. And it's very dangerous. And the amount of money, again, folks, is so minuscule in right to the, in the trillions of dollars we spend in this nation. So, okay, I've sounded <laughs> like Paul Revere, the British are coming. <laughs> you have indeed. All right, are well, you? coming up next, meet a business tycoon who traded a job on the oil pipelines for one inside the Texas prisons. That's what we say in, in prison evangelism, uh, changing hearts and closing prisons. So the return on investment is, is incredible. See how he's redeeming the lives of people behind bars. Next. What's with that kid? Where's your parents? Oh, you seem pretty smitten with the big man's daughter. Let's show them that you're a qualified assistant. Hold out your wrist. Uh, I'm going to check your pulse. Oh, faster than normal. So all the way you were looking at the girl, they're bringing in another doctor. There's got to be a way we can shorten the distance between the mountain and the ocean. I wouldn't give up for you. You're meant to be with Grace. I don't know why I didn't get screened a long time ago. I kept putting it off. What was I thinking? OK, Mr. Jones, we're all done. I told you it was easy. Well. At Lifeline Screening, we use ultrasound technology to help check your risk for stroke and heart disease. After all, four out of five stroke victims received no warning. Right now, a package of five painless screenings is just $149. So call today. Lifeline Screening, the power of prevention. Tomorrow. On the line, fighting California's record-breaking wildfires, where heroes are battling the blazes for days on end, and many worry that the worst is yet to come. Then, she had two life-threatening conditions, and doctors couldn't treat them both. If we remove the blood clots, you'll die of the aneurysm. If we repair the aneurysm, you'll die of the blood clots. On the next 700 Club. A nation of criminals, folks. The United States, just get this, we lock up more people percentage-wise in our population than communist China or Soviet Russia, or I guess now the uh, democratic, whatever they call themselves, but uh, it used to be Soviet Russia. The America has more laws. Six, uh, excuse me, what is it, 300,000? Uh, regulations that put people in prison. Sounds right. Just just federal agencies, not to mention the other. And now, with the opioid crisis and the drug problem, we're locking up so many people. And skyrocket incarceration has politicians, policymakers, and religious leaders rethinking criminal justice in America, a system that relies heavily on locking people up. Lock them up, and we're tough on crime. And I'm going to run for office as being one who's tough on crime. And everybody says, "Yay, get them!" Well, some argue uh, not nearly enough is being spent talking about how to rehab those who are the offenders. 
John Jessup introduces us to a Texas businessman on a twofold mission to save souls and close prisons. It's line pipe for 36 inch line pipe. David Hell knows a good investment like when he sees the one. They're taking pipe all over the place. At 14, he started working in the oil industry. Today, he makes a living buying old underground pipes and rehabilitating them, giving second life to what many might consider waste. It is ultimate recycling yeah. to me. And it's like I said, it's just tubular steel that can be used and reused. In a way, David's career has come full circle, much like his life. If you can imagine a total self-centered life, uh, me, 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 that, that was me, me, me. And a lot of that centered around uh, alcohol, sex, uh, uh, all the things, money, uh, and just, just taking care of my own personal needs. As a young husband and father, he wanted to abandon his destructive lifestyle. So he turned to Alcoholics Anonymous and soon after found himself in church. I jumped into AA and became Mr. AA. And when I became a Christian, I, I said, this is going to be an all or nothing deal for me as well. Now sober for more than 35 years, David's dedicated his new life to sharing his story with anyone who will listen. I would find people outside of a meeting and would go to lunch or go to coffee and and I would write stick figures and, and show people the story of Jesus. The AA crowd, you know, being part of that and that, that he used a, a lot there and, and kind of experimented there, I think that was sort of his testing ground. Several years ago, he wrote a book called How to Be a Child of God, and that opened a new door. Even though he is a gifted evangelist by gift, he never really had seen this coming. I never saw this coming. David's success has served him well, but after 30 years in the industry, he's spending less time reclaiming old pipes on the oil field and spending more time on the mission field reclaiming souls for Christ. In places like this, behind wire fencing, with armed guards and under constant surveillance, David Howell's book is making the biggest impact. CBN News obtained rare access to talk with prisoners about the value of David's 52-page how-to guide. Since I read that book, I changed my life. Kareef Gilstrap anxiously awaits his release in September after serving a two-year sentence for aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Kareef, how else have you changed? Has there been a change in your personality and your behavior? Yes, Dev. I've, I've learned how to tame my tongue. I've been reading my Bible more, doing a lot of Bible study. So, yes, definitely. Do you think others have noticed the changes as well? Yes. My sailor, he's been telling me. <laughs> what has he told you? He was like, you, you, <laughs> he said, you going all holy on me, I was like, man, I'm trying to get right, man. I got when I get back out there, I can't be who I used to be. Jackie Beaver's anger issues landed him in prison for more than 20 years, serving time for aggravated robbery and kidnapping. He wrote to David to tell him his book was amazing and opened his eyes to a lot he didn't know. Like I'm a true believer that Jesus Christ died for my sins. And when I read that book, it's like a breath of fresh air. It's like something took over me. CBN News was there to record the moment both men personally got to thank the author. For David, the meeting only confirms the call to keep reaching out to the two million American men and women behind bars. Here I am, 77, and I'm a roughneck from South Texas. And what do I know about writing a book about salvation? But I could identify with those kind of people. I've roughnecked with them, I've worked with them. For all the things that I did in all those years of, of that hellish living, he got caught and I didn't. The only difference is he's in prison and I'm not. Prison volunteer Rick Pritchard hands out copies of How to Be a Child of God. He says it's colorful, easy to understand, and produces real change in a place of physical and often spiritual bondage. They're free, and you can tell when they got Jackie, the smile, the smile on their faces, you know they're free, they're free inside. David wants to get 600,000 copies of his book into America's largest state and federal prisons and county jails, all with the goal of helping men and women behind bars experience spiritual freedom. And that's what we say in, in prison evangelism, uh, changing hearts and closing prisons. So the return on investment is, is incredible. Reporting for the East Ham Unit in Lovelady, Texas, I'm John Jessup for CBN News. Amazing. A roughneck who rehabs pipes, now rehabs men. 
Isn't that great? I love what he said about the only difference between me and them is I, I didn't get caught. You know, they did, yeah. Well, he knows. Yeah. There, but by the grace of God, go by. Well, that's beautiful. And he has that's wonderful right. testimony. And uh, we got to another. Well, we've got a, a miracle. Let, let's we talk do. about it. Yeah. yeah. Next, a mom worries about her daughter's pigeon toes. I worried for her self-esteem and her self-confidence. I worried that she might be embarrassed of how her feet were turned in. See how this mother's prayer of faith leads to a miracle. Plus, Pat and I will be praying for you and your needs right after this. Friend, do you remember when it felt good to withdraw your cash from the bank to expand a business, go on vacation, or buy a new car? Well, today, withdrawing your own cash has become a very risky business, according to The Secret War, a shocking new research report. I just read it, and folks, I was amazed to learn why banks are now required to spy on us for the government and then report any suspicious or unusual behavior. I suggest you get The Secret War free. Just call the number on the screen, no charge, from the folks at Swiss America and get this. Did you know simply spending cash today may be enough to have you branded as a potential criminal? That's right. The new war on cash is really a war against all freedom-loving Americans. The Secret War is yours free, so call the number on the screen and you can tell them. Pat Boone gave you the number. We're all getting older. There's no turning back the clock, right? But why should you have to leave your home because you can't get up the stairs? Don't struggle on the stairs and risk a fall. Stair lifts were made to make your life easier and safer. Acorn Stair Lifts has been helping people stay in their homes for over 20 years, and they would be honored to help you too. Acorn Stair Lifts is America's number one stair lift. Sit, relax, and ride up and down the stairs safely. Don't risk a dangerous fall or settle for living in just half your home. If you're uncertain about staying in your own home, you owe it to yourself to call the number on your screen right now. Don't wait until it's too late. Remove the risk of falling on the stairs. Call now for your free information kit, stairlift buying guide, and no obligation quote from Acorn Stairlifts. Call 1-800-908-4077 or visit acornstairlifts.com. That's 1-800-908-4077. Elizabeth Trabert had a tough time running without falling. The two-year-old was severely pigeon-toed, and her mother often worried about what that would mean for her daughter's future. Two-year-old Elizabeth Trabert loves to run and play outside. But a year ago, Melissa, Elizabeth's mother, noticed she wasn't walking normally. She was very pigeon-toed to the point where her one foot was almost entirely perpendicular to the other foot. Melissa made an appointment to see her pediatrician. He had told me that what actually caused this to occur is that whenever she would sit, she would often sit in a W position. He had assured me that this is actually not anything out of the ordinary. But after six months, Elizabeth's condition didn't improve. So Melissa made another appointment, this time with a different doctor. The other pediatrician was in complete agreement with the first pediatrician. I thought, well, if, if they both think that she's going to be okay, then I'll just, I just need to be patient and relax. A couple of months went by. Melissa still didn't see any improvements in her daughter's development. So she became extremely concerned. I worried for her self-esteem and her self-confidence. I worried that she would maybe avoid certain activities or certain social functions because she might be embarrassed of how her feet were turned in. Melissa began praying over her daughter every night after she gave her a bath. As I would put the lotion on her legs, I would find myself at that time specifically saying, Thank you, Jesus. I know one day you're going to heal my daughter's legs. One morning, while watching the 700 Club, Melissa heard Gordon beginning to pray. When two or more agree touching anything, it shall be done for them. 
we lay hands on that area of the body that needs healing. So I thought, well, it's just me, but I'll lay my hands on her legs and Gordon will be the second person to pray with me. And so I did. Be healed and be made whole in Jesus' name. Once it was over, then I believed that this prayer would be answered. Later that day, Melissa and her family were outside in the backyard when she noticed something different about Elizabeth. She was running through the bubbles, trying to catch them and pop them. I had said to my husband, do you see that? And he asked me what? And I said, her feet, her feet are not turned in anymore. They're perfectly straight. And he looked and he said, you're absolutely right. And I was in complete awe that I believed my prayer would be answered. But the same day, the very same day I saw this and witnessed it, and it was the most beautiful thing to see her run through these bubbles as carefree as she was and just loving them. God healed Elizabeth's legs that day, and her condition hasn't returned. Now she can run and play as fast as she wants. To feel that burden lifted off of my shoulders, to have that cross lifted, and to know it is true. God does hear our prayers. We just have to believe and we have to ask Him. And we are so excited. Elizabeth and her family are in the audience today. Her mom, Melissa, her dad, John, and her brother, Alex, came down from Pennsylvania, went waved to the audience. And so great to have you guys here. And what a miracle. Isn't that marvelous? And overnight, same day, yeah. And Gordon was the second person. They agreed Two together. and. God. All right, well, we're going to pray together if you'll agree with us. But here, here's a, a thing that happened. Uh, this lady was in Hollis, New York, and uh, she had diabetes for two decades. That's 20 years. Wow. And on June 27th, she heard you say, there's a lady, you've been diagnosed with diabetes, you've been praying for deliverance, God has heard your prayer, and uh, you're going to uh, be healed. And Pauline said this word was for her. On August the 10th, 2018. Praise that's, the Lord. That's this month. Yeah, that was not too long <laughs> a ago. A few weeks, about a week ago. <laughs> Pauline reported how much better she feels. Her doctor did tests, and guess what? She's been taken off diabetes oh. medication. That is a major miracle. What do you have? And here's Mary from Melbourne, Florida, had been taking medications for back pain for 20 years. While she was watching the 700 Club on July 16th, Mary heard Pat, heard you say, Pat, in the name of Jesus, somebody right now, as we're speaking, I think it's Mary, you've got arthritis of the spine, and God has just healed that arthritis. All that buildup of calcium is going away. Those vertebrae are completely whole in the name of Jesus. Just stretch, walk, and receive your healing right now. Mary received that word of knowledge with her name on it and has been completely healed. That is a miracle. All right, we're, we're going to pray together. Those in the studio, if you want to join with us, we're going to join hands. Yes, Lord. Whatever it is, look, with God, all things are possible. Nothing is impossible with God. Everything is possible. So believe Him right now. Father, yes. we come before you now. We thank you for these marvelous miracles. But Lord, in your sight, it says nothing because all you have to do is speak a word as the centurion said to Jesus, speak a word and my servant will be healed. Lord, speak that word and speak it through us. And we'll speak it now in the name of Jesus. May the power of God come into your life right now. Those of you who are praying, there are a number of you with arthritis, arthritis of the shoulder, arthritis of the hips, arthritis of the knees. And right now, I want you to raise your hands and say yes to God. In the name of Jesus, be made whole. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Wendy, what do you have? There's someone, your toes are deformed, and I'm not sure if it's um, arthritis or not, but you're laying hands on your toes right now, and God is, is healing you, and you're going to have normal toes. It's going to be a miracle. Uh, someone with a chronic migraine that has not gone away in days, and uh, you're crying out for relief. God is touching you right now, and you are healed in Jesus name. There's a lady in this audience, I believe it's Sophia. Uh, you're spitting up blood right now and uh, uh, you, you've got a, a bleeding ulcer and 
the, the Lord is reaching down and uh, He's killing those bacteria. He's healing your, your inside, healing your stomach, healing your abdomen, healing your intestine, and you will be completely whole in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank One you, more. Lord. What do you have? Somebody with a, just a bloating that will not go away um, in your lower abdomen. Uh, just lay, you're laying hands right now on your stomach, and God is, you are going to have a flat stomach. That bloating is leaving in Jesus' name. Throughout this audience, all over the world, people are gripped by fear. You're afraid. You're afraid. There's a spirit of fear, and God, perfect love, the God says, perfect love casts out fear. And right now, we bind a spirit of fear. In the name of Jesus, you are delivered. Receive it and rebuke that spirit. Do not let it come upon you. Declare it. Perfect love casts out fear, for fear has torment. In the name of Jesus, amen, amen. and amen. Wherever you are, we'd love to hear from you. It's, it's, it's an easy number to remember. It's 707,000. And you just type 800, because it's the toll-free number, so you dial 1-800. 707,000. We want to hear your answers to prayer. We want to receive your prayer requests. Any way we can serve you, we're here for you. Wendy? Amen. Still ahead, he's the son of a famous father and a celebrity in his own right. The voice contestant and talent coach Anthony Evans joins us live later on today's 700 Club. Are you suffering from feeling tired or worn out during the day? Can you not turn off your brain at night? You are not alone. Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Bruce, the Sleep Doctor, and I've partnered with the Christian Broadcasting Network, and we're gonna bring you some unbelievable information that you can use tonight to get a better night's rest. Wake up to your best life. Watch the five-part series, Protect Your Sleep, all next week on The 700 Club. Welcome back to The 700 Club. The nearly five-week search for a missing Iowa College student is over. Authorities discovered what they believed to be the body of Molly Tibbetts Tuesday. Police say Christian Rivera, an immigrant living here illegally, confessed to kidnapping Tibbetts, killing her, and dumping her body in a cornfield. Rivera has been charged with first-degree murder. President Trump noted the arrest and called for changes to immigration laws at his rally in West Virginia last night. Well, Hawaii residents are bracing themselves as a powerful hurricane approaches the islands. The National Weather Service said Hurricane Lane had become a Category 5 storm Tuesday night with 157 mile an hour winds. Weather officials say the hurricane's path is unpredictable, but the storm is expected to turn northwest toward Hawaii and possibly make landfall Thursday through Saturday. Well, you can always get the latest from CBN News by going to our website, website at CBNNews.com. Pat and Wendy will be back with more of the 700 Club right after this. Did you know that a dirty CPAP system could make you sick? If you knew what could be growing in your mask and hose, it would keep you up at night. <gasps> now, SoClean.com has released the world's first automated hands-free CPAP cleaner and sanitizer. With its patented design, SoClean is fast, effective, and hands-free, killing 99.9% .9 of all CPAP germs and bacteria. Try SoClean now through this special TV offer, risk-free for 30 days. Just call 800-619-7129. The SoClean works, and it's a really effective product, and I couldn't believe how easy it was to use. SoClean works on all popular CPAP machines and masks, destroying CPAP germs and bacteria without the daily hassle of washing your system by hand. Just place your mask in, close the lid, and walk away. Voila! Sanitized and ready to use. Try SoClean risk-free for 30 days. This is a limited-time offer. Call now, 800-619-7129, or visit SoClean.com today. Anthony Evans was just 12 years old when he heard his famous father, Tony Evans, addressing a huge crowd at a Promise Keepers conference in Texas. The men were visibly stirred and encouraged, but Anthony had only one overriding thought. I can never, ever be him. Take a look. Anthony Evans, son of megachurch pastor Tony Evans, was already an established Christian artist when he became a contestant on the hit reality show, The Voice. 
even though he was knocked out of the competition early. It opened up new opportunities for Anthony to work alongside famous artists in Hollywood. He was later hired by The Voice to help cast new talent. In his book, Unexpected Places, Anthony discusses the highs and lows he experienced on his journey, including struggling with depression and doubt, and what got him through those challenging times. And please welcome back to the 700 Club, Anthony Evans. Anthony, great to hey, see you. Great Looking to see you good, too. my friend. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you very well, much. First of all, we just want to say how sorry we are about the loss of your cousin, Winter Evans Pitt, and just ask you how you mm. and your family are doing. Um, we're good. I, my, but the, sorry, I wasn't ready for to talk about that first. Yes, I. Okay. Right. So it's uh, hard for all of us to lose a family member suddenly, but. Um, I'm actually standing on the strength of her husband, who's one of my best friends. His name is Jonathan Pitts, and he has just been so strong. And I'm like, if he can be this strong, I, I can too. So I'm actually leaving here and going to visit him today. Again, wow. I've been able to just run back and forth and see him. So we're doing okay give it, given the circumstances. Okay, sorry, I didn't mean to put no, you on the spot. I'm the, we just... I'm the super emotional one in my family, oh, so gosh. I take things in and then I'm like, uh-oh, uh-oh, pull up. <laughs> yes. I'll, I'll just go, yeah. But it's, it's all good. I well, appreciate that so much. You, your family's been in our thoughts and prayers. So, Thank you. Um, well, let's go back to that day when you were 12 years old in the Texas Stadium and mm -hmm. your dad's on stage and you're, and you're just looking up at him like, wow, my dad's a pretty important guy. Mm -hmm. What was going through your mind at that age? Um, you know, there was no pressure put on me directly but just being in that situation, my dad never said you have to be me or like you need to be a preacher or anything like that. It's just that that was a lot. His uh, his ministry was growing exponentially as I, when I was a child. So it's just um, you know there are moments where I put the pressure on me of that's I'm supposed to be doing something like this. You know it's almost I I really uh, compare having my dad as a father to literally having a spiritual Michael Jordan as a father. And people look oh. at me and go, hey, why can't you dunk from the free throw line like your dad? That's not a normal thing to be able to do something like that. Right. Because in my mind, I'm like, you'll be lucky to get a layup out of me. You know what I mean? Uh, but <laughs> but uh, it, it's he's a my both of my parents are very uh, encouraging as it relates to my specific calling. So that that helped me. And yeah. in your new book, uh, Unexpected Places, mm -hmm. uh, you say that your whole life has really been about practice, performance, putting on a show, mm -hmm. um, how so? Well, it's, it's been about making sure that I don't land at this place where I am putting on a show all the time. You know, I've had to get to the point where um, I, the book was written out of three, three, off three principles, honesty, vulnerability, and transparency. Those are the, th that's where the book came from. I had to get to a point where I stripped away turning on the preacher's kid thing, which nobody taught me that, but <laughs> you live this life where you know how to walk in, smile, shake hands, kiss babies, make everybody <laughs> think everything's good, when all the while I'd be pushing down things in, internally and, and, mm -hmm. and secrets and all that stuff just made me sick over, over, over time. Yeah, I like that you said, and it so resonated, this is truth, you say secrets make us sick. How do secrets make us sick and how can we avoid that? Yeah, I just think holding anything in that is not good for you, wh whatever it is, you know, it, it's just it's just not good to, to have all that stuff inside. I feel like um, finding people around you who are a soft place to land. I always tell my friends, I have a, a gymnast friend of mine who is an elite gymnast and she tries new skills all the time. And I said, why are you not scared to try new stuff? And wow. she said, because I have a soft place to land. Ooh. And I, in my mind, if you are um, set up a scenario around you with good people and a good church where you can be honest, authentic, and vulnerable. It gives you a soft place to land as you try to get back up on your feet. Were you? And that, what, what secret were you hiding that you talk about in the book? I, I, a lot of different things. I was really the, the pressure that we talk about uh, in this book of having to perform and be somebody. Yeah. That keeping that inside got me to a point where I was literally depressed. Like wow. I was, I was holding all this in and, and smiling and acting like everything was okay. But it was. That general thing of I need to be this, and I don't feel like I'm like that. Like the That's, comparison. Yeah, mm -hmm. just just that comparison. When God made thing. you, you know, you're fearfully and wonderfully made, and you have unique gifts and talents, but you had this pressure. Yeah, I had a pressure, and I and I had I came to a realization that God doesn't have grandkids, you know, so I had to come into my own uh, re relationship with Him. Okay, yeah. let's talk about the voice. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, I know at one time, one time you wanted to be a veterinarian, right? Yeah. <laughs> but you ended somehow uh, singing on the voice. I ended. Singing because of my father, who if he was if he's watching now, he would be like, "Yep, that was because of me." He, he loves to say that to all of us as it relates to what we're doing, which most of it's true. He's sure. Um, so yeah, I ended up singing because of my dad in general, and then um, the voice. I literally heard a commercial in my sleep about a new show. I kind of left the TV on, mm. and there was a new show 
coming on NBC. And a friend of mine um, was at my house. His name is Jeremy Camp. He's a, a well-known artist. And he's like, yo, just do it. Like, you have the freedom right now to just send him a video and see what happens. He's a great and, artist. Uh, yes, he Fantastic. is. Fantastic. Yeah. Now, you, you did advance to the later rounds of the show. Um, what happened instead? Uh, well, I, I was in the battle rounds. What, what happened instead is I got a call from a producer right after I left the show, and they said, we're going to change the rules the next season because of you. Oh. Um, so they added uh, something called steals to the show, which if you watch it, you're familiar with that because of something that happened because of that battle round with me and um, a guy named Jesse Campbell. And so... But right when I left the stage, one of the other coaches hired me to come in and do his Christmas album. So I went back to Dallas and then turned around and went back to L.A. to work with CeeLo Green on his Christmas album. And that was six years ago. And since then, I've right. been working and in, you, in you've L.A. And you worked a lot with Kirk Franklin, too. Mm -hmm. And it's funny in the book because he's, like, always calling you. Are you ready now? Are you ready yeah, yet? Yeah, Are you yeah, ready? Yeah. And you're like, not yet. <laughs> yeah. Not yet, Kirk. Yeah. But he didn't give up on you. No, he, he hasn't. He didn't then as a singer, and he hasn't now as, as a brother. He's very... Um, that's a great way of putting it. He has never given up on me in all of our ups and downs. Well, He's taught me a whole lot. Uh, you're going to sing for us because you, you have an album out um, as well as a book. Well, you've been busy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, it's called Back to Life. And what's the significance of the song, Anthony, that you're going to sing for um, us? See You Again is a song written by a friend of mine, Chrissy Nordoff and Michael Neal. And they... I was tired of always getting on stage and talking about what God had done in my life in the past. Right. I wanted to see him again, move fresh and new. And I, it was a challenge to me and also all the listeners to wow. ask God to move again so you can see him again. And a lot of those times it's in unexpected places that we get to see him again. Wow. Well, we can't wait to hear it. And uh, yeah. I'll let you go ahead and walk over to our music set. And uh, you can find out more about Anthony's story in his book. I'm holding it right now. It's called Unexpected Places. And his latest CD is called Back to Life. Both are available wherever books and music are sold. You can also hear more from Anthony on our Facebook page. Just go to facebook.com slash 700 club. And now here's Anthony Evans singing See You Again. Shattered by light, I've seen joy break after the night. I want to see it again. I've seen tragic and hopeless days turn to stories of amazing grace. I want to see it again. I've seen strength rise to persevere. I want to see it again. I've seen bodies ruined and frail rise in power completely healed. We are desperate for your presence. Revive us by your spirit within. We want to see you again. See you again. Oh, come, Lord, like a rushing wind. We are desperate for your for your presence. Revive. By your spirit within, we want to see you again, see you again. Oh, we want to see you, Jesus. We want to see you again. We remember all the great things you have done, but we believe the greatest things are still to come. 
you have done but we believe that greater things are still to come we remember all the great things you have done jesus but we believe that greater things are still to come we remember we remember all the great things you have done but we believe still ahead Get ready for another round of Your Questions, Honest Answers. We'll tackle your emails later on today's show. Attention, do you have Medicare? Do you want to make sure you have the most benefits and lowest possible out-of-pocket costs? You may be able to lower your out-of-pocket costs and get dental, vision, and prescription drug coverage included in your plan. Call the Medicare Coverage Helpline now to find out what you deserve. Hi, I'm Dr. Jason Buckwald. Over 3 million people have called the Medicare Coverage Helpline, but there are still many people who don't check to see if they're eligible for more benefits and lower out-of-pocket costs. It's so easy. One simple free call could save you money and get you more benefits. Be smart. Call the Medicare Coverage Helpline now. Call now to see if you may be eligible to lower your copays and get extra benefits, including dental and prescription coverage. Don't delay. Call to see if you're able to save money and get more benefits now. Call 1-800-256-3200 now. Again, call 1-800-256-3200 now. Let's take a look at some numbers. Four out of five people who have a stroke, their first symptom is a stroke. 80% of all strokes and heart disease, preventable. And $149 is all it takes to get screened and help take control of your health. We're Lifeline Screening. And if you're over 50, call this number to schedule an appointment for five painless screenings that go beyond regular checkups. We use ultrasound technology to literally look inside your arteries for plaque which builds up as you age and increases your risk for stroke and cardiovascular disease. And by getting them through this package, you're saving over 50%. So call today and consider these numbers. For just $149, you'll receive five screenings that could reveal what your body isn't telling you. And I'm gonna tell you that's the best $150 I've ever spent in my life. Lifeline Screening. The power of prevention. Call now to learn more. Hey, we're delighted to have you with us. This is the 700 Club, and I want to introduce you to Kent Allison. For 23 years, Kent had a remarkable career in the film industry. He's also a member of what we call the 700 Club. And he says he likes supporting CBN because it's part of something bigger. Kent Allison is a two-time Emmy Award-winning filmmaker whose work has aired on MTV, NBC, and HBO. But he especially appreciates the work that he and his wife helped to support as partners of CBN. One thing that CBN and 700 Club do immensely well is to mobilize people and resources. I mean, we have Operation Blessing. We have Helping the Home Front, Orphan's Promise, the Superbook. Uh, so I know that when that money is directed toward them, that they are gonna be the most amazing stewards of that money. For Kent, supporting CBN as a 700 Club member is just one way he likes to thank God for the success he's seen in life and business. Having been in business for 23 years, there's only one place that I can attribute that to, and that's to God. The blessings that I've received have been too, too many to, uh, to count. Kent says partnering with CBN means he's part of something bigger. There are so many things that CBN does that I know I, I could not accomplish, that I can't get done. It allows me to be a part of such an amazing body of Christ. I know that in some small way, my directing his money to CBN is absolutely the best thing to do for me. I like what Kent says, we're good at mobilizing resources. That's exactly what we do. We mobilize millions of people to change the world. That's what we're there to do. And uh, the 700 Club is so simple to be part of it. It's just 65 cents a day. If you buy a can of soda pop, it's, I don't know, it used to be a few pennies, now it's two, three dollars a can. 
So 65 cents is just a part of a can of soda pop. And yet together, that makes up $20 a month. And then you, you mobilize, say, 100,000 or a million people with that kind of, and all of a sudden you've got a significant amount of money which can be used to do something. And so we're operating all around the world. We're broadcasting in about 59 different languages. Uh, we have maybe, um, I don't know, 300 million or so people, a uh, audience around the world. And uh, millions and millions of people are coming to the Lord. So I thank him. I thank Kent. And I thank you. And I want to give you something called angels that seems to have been well received. And we'll give this to you when you join the 700 Club. So give us a call. So you can count on me as one of your special partners. 1-800-700-7000. Okay, let's have some questions. Yeah, we've got time for a couple questions. This is from Jackie. She says, is trans transcendental meditation okay for a Christian to do? Uh, I don't think so. I think uh, you're supposed to meditate on some uh, uh, figure in Hindu mythology, and you're supposed to have a mantra you say over and over again, you know. And you don't, it's in, it's in Hindu, you don't know what you're saying, but you're calling on some Hindu God. And I, I think, you know, there's nothing wrong with meditating on the Bible. So I'm meditating on the Psalms, how good and how pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity. And I'm meditating on that. That's good, absolutely good. But the so-called transcendental, when you're into a whole other world, that's not too cool. What else? All right, here's one uh, from a viewer. What do we do after we pray for something that is really needed? The Bible states, ask and keep on asking, seek and keep on seeking, etc. And if I do not get what I'm praying for, does that mean it was not meant to be? Um, Jesus, again, talked about it in particular, but it's, it's the Greek present, which means keep on doing it. Keep on asking, keep on. There's a time that God will say, no, I've heard your prayer. I'm not going to give you, you're asking the wrong thing. I'm not going to do it. When he says no, then stop. Right. But until then, uh, he said, be importune, keep on asking. That's what we're told to do, all right? Amen. Christine says, I've never been married, never really had the desire to be married. I'm in my 40s and take care of my elderly parents. Am I a selfish person if marriage and kids have never been a desire of my heart? Am I to find God's ultimate will in my life? What's so well, wrong with being single? Just the opposite. The, the Bible says that oh, that's a gift that's given you by God. And uh, some are uh, eunuchs by the act of men, and some voluntarily give up the uh, pleasures of uh, marital relations in order to live for the Lord. So there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever, if that's your calling. No problem. <laughs> What's wrong is indulging the other way without being married. All right. We leave you with today's Power Minute from the book of Philippians. I am convinced and confident of this very thing, that who, he who has begun a good work in you will perfect and complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Well, for in, Wendy and all of us, this is Pat Robertson. It's been so good having you with us. And we've got some really tremendous uh, stories on tomorrow's program. You don't want to miss it. So until then, goodbye. God bless you. It has the power to influence weight loss, boost your immune system, and improve brain function. We've seen an explosion of data on the role of the gut microbiome in health. The free Build a Better Gut booklet reveals the latest information about the gut microbiome. You'll discover how your gut affects the rest of your health. The gut microbiome has been linked to depression and cancer and heart disease. Learn how to build a stronger, healthier gut. The microbiome, if it's in good composition, are really protecting us all the time from more invasive things. Get the Build a Better Gut booklet, free from the Christian Broadcasting Network. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to cbn.com slash build a better gut. You need to make sure that your microbes are working with you, not against you. And if you order online, you'll get immediate access to the Build a Better Gut series, a digital copy of the booklet, and related bonus material. Build a better gut today. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to cbn.com slash build a better gut for your free copy.